Hello, everybody. This is Scott Framuller and Shelly Nutko on The Mental Knot. <laughs> and we were just discussing what we're going to talk about. We forgot. <laughs> Brain fart. Uh, no, seriously. No, I'm serious. We we're going to talk about escaping. I was just testing Escape. You. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I No, actually, remember. I did forget. I, so, the only thing that came to my mind was running, which is sort of escaping. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was like looking at myself, looking at the camera. I'm like, hmm, I actually don't remember. But now we do. Okay. So, Whew. escaping. Um. I get, you know, this goes back to the abandonment thing too, right? But even, even more so, this is something that you do deliberately. Sometimes unconsciously, but it's deliberate yes. in, a, in a way. Sometimes out of habit. And the first thing I always thought, you know, like I used um, alcohol as an escape. Mm -hmm. I did for most of my life. Not most of my life, but a lot, a big part of it, you know, especially in the toxic part. Um, and and the, the, the escape is not only... I think, I think that, you know, for me, that escape, that alcohol escape was enhancing my fantasy of things being okay. Hmm. Right. And, and sort of keep me from reality. Yeah. You know, and, and when we talk about sobriety and all the things, you know, like Lee was here and we have lots of people from rehab and psychotherapists and all this stuff, but really what we're talking about is the escape, like what you use to disconnect from your reality. Right. <laughs> you know, and that could be many different things. For me, I think I, I generally used you know, alcohol, when I wasn't doing alcohol, it was an adrenaline thing. Mm -hmm. And, and that could, I mean, some of the stuff's good, right? Like some escapes are good. Like sometimes you want to take a break, you know? Sure. Um, Your road trip was an escape. Yeah. My road trip was an escape. And I'm not sure now that I look back on that, you know, that was super healthy, healthy for me, mm -hmm. but the beginning part wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, I need to reset. Like that's a hard stop. And the escape was not, it, it was escape from this life, but actually to be immersed in my reality. It was you know? purposeful escape, sure. which is different. You're right. And the difference is someone who chooses to sit down and have 12 drinks one night or every night mm -hmm. or sits down at 4 o'clock every day, turns on Netflix and shuts it off at midnight mm -hmm. every night or um, you know, somebody who's on their phone 17 hours a day, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Those are not purposeful. Those are that distraction. Are, or that, that's always on a phone at work or always texting uh -huh. or whatever. You know, those are escapes. Mm -hmm. we, when we said 12 drinks a night, I, it was, you, know, you were one of the people that mentioned it to me, but my friend Jackie was like, dude, do you realize you have like five drinks in 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, I never realized that. Mm -hmm. That's a total escape. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even, you know what I'm saying? And, and, the, and the scariest part of that was is it really didn't have a total effect on me. Like, I wasn't drunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was, just had to be for sure buzzed, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. not that big. I don't weigh that much. But, but just that in itself, like, that's an audit. Like, you're saying, okay, I'm done. You know, I'm going to disconnect now and just have fun and do whatever. Right. And you can make whatever excuse you want to make, but that's not, that's not okay. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And, and then, and then the, the other part is, too, is when you realize your reality of that there are so many people around that didn't even care that didn't even notice that's her that's hard that's a little bit hard too right like that's part of your reality because that's like, in retrospect that's also you know when you look back on a toxic relationship you know your escape can be a form of a, a type of somebody letting manipulating you mm -hmm. or letting you you know be in a state to where you could be manipulated you know what I'm saying? So, so you have yeah. to be careful with your escape too, right. especially if it's like alcohol, drugs, whatever. Right. You know, sex. I mean, that yeah. can even be bad. Well, but, but can it be bad? Uh, can sex mm -hmm. is an escape be bad? Yes. Can it? Okay. okay. It can be. Okay, fine. No, Robin, I mean, if it's like Robin a, said, it's bad. It's like yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, we don't I, need to get too much. I think into we that. both know what we're talking about. I think we do too. Yeah. 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 Um, unhealthy. Let's put it that way. Sometimes yes. unhealthy. Unhealthy. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. it is an unhealthy escape. What are some more though? Why don't you talk a little bit? I'm gonna shut up for. Let's time it. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, we're going to time it? No, I'm going to time how long are you quiet? No, I was, uh, I thought of something before you said sex, and now I forgot. Oh, because I, I said the word sex? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about... Um, oh, I know what I was thinking. Go. Wait, do I? Mm -hmm. um, it was about escaping, and um, I forget. Seriously, I forget. Well, let, so quick. let's, so we go back to the healthy stuff, right? Okay. And, and when we talk about the, you know, you, you can escape with a vacation, that's healthy. Very healthy. That's a healthy, great thing to do. Um, Unless you take the vacation because you're stressed out and you need to, you need a break and you have that mindset. No, it's different. Oh. So I know, I know people who talk that way and they think it's going to solve everything. 
because you're running away. That's not so. Bad. If you think your vacation is going to solve everything, right. you're taking yourself with you, right? right. Mm -hmm. So that escape is never going to work. Now, if you want to just like go get away because you want to go someplace nice and you're going to do this thing mm -hmm. and, and you're going to be present, have an adventure. Yeah, you're going to be present. Yeah. Then that's completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, when I think about, you know, I go to the lake a lot, right? I really enjoy the water, mm -hmm. and I didn't really realize that so much before, but mm -hmm. now it's like therapy for me, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it's not an escape. You know what I mean? I'm still conscious. I'm still grounded. No, I'm you're still aware. present when you're there. I'm super present, right? Yeah. And um, communicating and mm -hmm. having a good time and mm -hmm. whatever. And that that isn't an escape for me, really. That's just healthy. Mm -hmm. That's like one of my hobbies. I enjoy it. But at the same time, you know, that could be an escape, right? Like if you're in a healthy spot, like say you go to the lake and you just get hammered and that, that gets back into that situation. Sit there and or, veg out. Right, or you just sit there and like stare off into space or, or yeah. whatever, and and I think, you know, the, I think the only person that can evaluate whether it's healthy or unhealthy is you, is mm -hmm. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like just being self aware. Mm -hmm. um, what about like it like at work? Like how how do people escape at work? Like in a corporate environment, oh, like gosh. Robin when she doesn't want to work, what does she I do? Know. Let's ask Robin. Yeah. Well, I don't escape because I love my job. Oh, you, you see, there's well, the she's difference. actually on record right now. But you yeah. know what? So, this is the yeah. same thing as relationships. What you just said. So when you're happy with your relationship, you don't have a need to escape. No, no right? No, you, you, you you're connected. You're present. That's mm -hmm. an interesting concept. You're in yeah. it, and it's the same thing with a relationship. I keep, I keep referring back to drinking because that's like such a common place, right? Every street corner, every restaurant, every Circle K, like it's everywhere. It's a thing and you I, do. I keep referring back to that. But have you ever been? Plus, in that's a, relationship? a very current thing for you. Sure, yeah, it's super current, right? Like it's on top of my. Mm -hmm. So clearly, there was an issue. Mm -hmm. But the. Um, one of the things that I want to say, like, you know, you ever date somebody and you're so immersed in the conversation, like you don't really need to do anything else. Like yep. you're, you're just so interested and immersed. You're like, wow, this is really cool. Like, oh, da, da, da. you're blabbing along like, oh, shit, it's been an hour. That's or right. like, oh, my God, we had dinner instead of being like, Jesus, I got to see her for an hour. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's a different situation. Yeah. Like where I notice in healthy relationships, I don't really even when I was drinking, I didn't need to drink mm -hmm. as much. Right. Mm -hmm. I still would like have one or two, but I wouldn't have five. Right. You know? Yeah. Not to say that I was in an unhealthy spot when I was drinking. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like uh -huh. you notice a difference. No, I get it. And I was telling somebody, I, I don't know if I was telling you, I forget the other day, but situation I'm in now um, with somebody I'm seeing. And sometimes we just sit and have coffee and it, like do it a lot, actually. And it's just and we'll talk for hours and just it's it's present. It's mindful. It's nice. And there's no need to escape because it's highly enjoyable. Right. That's you know? a cool thing. Yeah. So how would you define a situation in a relationship? I mean, I don't want to get off topic. I'm just saying like situation. That was an interesting situation. Yeah, I won't put you it's on the spot. A, I mean, it, yeah, it's a relationship. Well, yeah, I'm it's a relationship. It's two people. It's a relationship. We're seeing each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. It's so two people. Yeah. Two people seeing each other. That's nice. You know. No, it's cool. Seriously, I'm happy for you. That's but, a good thing. But, I, but think no, I know what you're saying. What it's a sign of, and that's what Robin's comment made me think of, is just that when you're um, in a place where you're really connected mm -hmm. and enjoying it, there's no need to escape. And there's there's no there's no desire to repeat an old habit maybe where you did escape. Right. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be a relationship. Sometimes you're just escaping no. yourself. Right. Family. You oh, know, absolutely. Family, family or yes. Whatever. And you know what's funny, too, is Thank you. when we talk about... Um, That's a big one for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like yeah. any relationship, even the relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes I'll just go home. It, it, sometimes even now, like, I started this new workout thing, and it's kicking my ass. So well, by five, I'm done. If it's CrossFit, that's interesting. Oh, my God, yeah. Like, I'm freaking... It's killing me, mm -hmm. you know? In a good way, mm -hmm. but like, I, like last night I went home and I was just like, dude, I am done. And I laid on the couch and I just watched a movie, you know, and I ice cream and popcorn. I ate everything I could find because I was so damn hungry, but it, it was just. That sounds like a great night. I, mm -hmm. I was actually, I was escaping. I was a, seriously, I was like. But that oh. doesn't sound like escape. That sounds like almost, that sounds like, like self-care. You know, yeah, yeah. Like that's self-care. That's bit, relaxing. But, yeah. 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 You know, and sometimes the escape too is that you know, that fitness or uh -huh. cycling or, uh -huh. you know, you know, like you take your dog, you take Juno for a walk every morning. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's awesome. You yeah. know, that's a healthy escape. Positive it's, escape. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's not, I mean, it's not even an escape. It's a pleasure. Yeah. 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 And it, the other thing too, you know, we always talk about social media and on your phone and TV and, you know, Facebook and Instagram, and mm. all that, you know, all those mm -hmm. things that that's a big deal. 
It is a big deal. That's a huge escape too, because I notice sometimes when I'm even looking on some of those platforms, and I'm not saying they're bad, right? But the, you, you know, you look on some of those platforms and you almost like forget even where you're at because you're so engaged in like this video. And then I notice my son, Nate, he's like, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Oh, dad, I'm on, you know, I'm watching TikTok or something. TikToks. TikTok, yeah, TikTok, right? I'm like, what do you, what, dude, put your phone away, like be present. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he's always on TikTok, like mm -hmm. always. And I'm like, what are you watching? And I'll start watching and I'll just be like, oh, that, you know what I mean? And then I'm like sucked in too. It gets you sucked in. But you're totally not aware of anything except for watching these funny videos. Sure. You know? So I get it. It's entertainment. Sure. But it's also an escape too. Yes. Video games. Yes. Same thing. You and, know? and sometimes if you, if you don't catch yourself, you could do it for hours. Yeah. And I'm not talking about me because I don't watch those, but <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you know, when we, 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 um, trauma, uh, one of the ways to deal with trauma is an escape too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about cheating, we talk about all these different things, but a lot of times people don't realize that sometimes work is an escape mm -hmm. also. And I, I, I know I talked oh, about this is, before, right? Like if you're, if you keep yourself busy at work all the time, like Robin was just like doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, there's and, a reason behind it because I have a toxic atmosphere at home right. with my so mother. So it's an escape. So it's an escape, but it's also something that I absolutely love to do. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's a win-win for you. But Absolutely. but it's also right. Like it's important to have a work-life balance. Even yes. even though it's something you love to do, you have to have that work-life balance, life balance in for everything. mental health. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we're not uh, clearly not going to counsel Robin. Right. Because we're not qualified. But <laughs> right. But the the you know you find you, you hear sometimes I was talking to a guy um, that I knew in the fire department and his son's now in the fire department and he's like oh yeah you know he gets off shift and he works out twice a day and he has two jobs and he's doing this and that and I'm like dude he's like running from his life. Yeah. He doesn't want to be. In his life, like no one, you know, wants to fill their day up yeah. every day, all day long. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I'm not gonna say no one, but yeah. that's definitely something to to address and yeah. discuss. Yeah. Maybe it is healthy. Maybe that is how he wants to live, or maybe he just wants to keep himself so freaking busy he doesn't want to deal with yeah. the trauma from the job, right? Absolutely. And and the scariest thing is too is like once maybe that work goes away, or when you get older, or whatever, then you're eventually gonna have to address what you're running from or escaping. And, and we, we, you know, it's funny when we talked about earlier, we talked about like a CEO or, you know, you leave your career, your job or whatever. Well, you know, especially as a firefighter or you're in the military or whatever, you might be out of traveling or out of town or on a mission or whatever, getting mm -hmm. deployed. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're gone at big blocks of time from home. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to really deal with the issues at home. And then you end up being at home all the time when you retire and you're like, holy shit. Now yeah. what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Now I got to deal with Shelly every day. Right. You know? Yeah. Like that's. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to make sure that it's your true. base is healthy and that your environment's healthy, so you don't have to escape it. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not talking to Robin, but we are. You know, and I noticed that too. Um, we talk about exes, like my ex-wife, um, Melissa. Like we get along really good, mm -hmm. right? I don't have to escape her. I right. don't have to be like scared. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, I'm not scared. Fearful. That's something well, fearful. Fearful. Of ex -wives. Yeah. Fear but. <laughs> well, but it, you're not fearful of the person. You're fearful of like what yeah. their actions are, but they sure, might implicate sure. a lot of right. men are afraid of somebody raising child support, you know, there's like, yeah. or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Women are afraid of it, but yeah, fear is a word. Yeah. And so like talk about some escapes for, for females. No, as you, I just, I thought of something else as you were um, talking about escaping and, and um, numbing and everything. And I was thinking about that period of my life when I was a teenager and, and, and the, the friend you were talking about, and I spent, you know, four years probably, five years drinking. And, but I would only do that on weekends. And during the week, I was going to school. I was in high school, going to school, studying. And then I had two jobs. So I was never present. Mm -hmm. And then on weekends, I'm drinking, you know. So it was like I was never present for five years. Mm -hmm. And didn't realize it until you just talked about this guy who has like a job yeah. and this and that and all this yeah. stuff. I was like, holy shit, that was me. And I did that for a long time too, yeah. you know. I remember um, I was in <laughs> a marriage or whatever, relationship. I'll just say relationship. Yeah. And I did that too. I worked all the time. Yeah. And I didn't even think about what I was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what the most powerful thing is? And tell me if I'm wrong, Robin, but you get your affirmation and your health from your career instead of your home life when you really should be getting it from your home life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, they can, you can get it from both, but you know what I mean? Like when the, when the, the balance is off, it's, yes. it's, it's off, you yes. know, and, and that makes things a little bit tougher. Right. And then you start to attach more to the job. I've done that. Like when I was in the fire department, sure. I was so into that and so 
you know, attached to that. Like, hey, I get my accolades and I get my affirmations and I'm mm-hmm. good at what I'm doing and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And then, you know, you go home and you're like, eh. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, that's because so. it was a lack of worth. And so you were right. getting the worth there, but the worth needs to come from the, you. From so within. no matter where you are, you would. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's what was missing. It's it's interesting when, when you know, you look back on your life and how you behaved. And, you know, I can see that. I thought of that right away with that, you know, the kid were having two workouts and two jobs and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's what I did. I only know because I did it. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, I'd be like, oh, wow, he's really ambitious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, wow, he's gonna so, kick ass in the world. He's yeah, awesome. but then you look, yeah. you kind of step back and look at that big picture. And you're you know? like, wow, that's unhealthy. The um, what are some more? What are some more? I mean, we talked about social media. Um, I mean, I, th- I think one is, um, you know, just people getting into the habit of of getting in that, um, not being present, just present during the day or whatever it is, whether it's at work or you know maybe a stay at home mom or whoever the whatever the situation is. And, you know, maybe having a group text that just goes on and on and mm. on. And that is their reality. Mm-hmm. That's that's become their reality. Almost that- like almost like they're in a room with people mm-hmm. day and night. Yeah. And that's an escape because they're they're not you know, they, they don't have that that physical connection with everyone. But but they have the that virtual connection and the virtual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever notice that, too? Like those group texts go on forever. Mm-hmm. You're like, holy shit, like how many notifications, you know what I mean? Like, oh, they said, oh, they, you know, you get 10 people in those things. And you're like, my God. Yeah, no. That's like a day's that's, worth that's of big. stuff. Yeah, I know, right? That's, <laughs> that's like, big. what? Yeah. But no, it's true. I, 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 um, you know, one of my dating experiences was a gal that like, she couldn't, she couldn't put her phone down. Mm. Like everywhere she went, she had her phone everywhere. Mm. She'd always have it in her hand or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's always something, oh, I'm, oh, it's because of my kids. And you're like, no, dude, your kids are freaking, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're in college. Like they're not texting you that much. Right. You know, it's not your kids. So, right. But, but it goes back to that thing where that you know you can't be by yourself like you have to maintain these all these sure. other thirds and this other stuff mm-hmm. so you can escape when you need to you know yes it's um it's really interesting it's really powerful mm-hmm. so it yeah. is absolutely so um like when you go cook make, bake cookies with Ava I always I love that I just love it when you say it what are you doing oh I'm baking cookies with Ava right that's a, is is that an escape or is that like a joyful no that's purposeful intentional yeah. Total difference. Total difference. Yeah. It's chaotic, messy. It's all the good stuff. <laughs> right. And yeah. Bo's into it now. In fact, this last time, Ava's like, eh, halfway through, she's like, I'm going to go watch my show. But Bo is into it. He's two and a half. Oh, man, that was like, it was like a cyclone. But it was great because yeah. he's two and a half and he's like smashing the eggs and everything, you mm-hmm. know. But it's it's great. It's not an escape. It's like, I am going to go here at this time and I'm going to bake cookies. Yeah. And it's it's awesome. And it, I think it goes back to your mindset too. Is your escape healthy or unhealthy? It's kind of like I'm going back to drinking again. But yeah. you know, if you're in a good mindset and you're drinking, okay. Yeah. You know, then things are going to be okay. But if you're not in a good mindset and you're drinking, then things aren't going to be okay. Yeah. You know. I mean, you look at things like wine pairings, right? You mm-hmm. go sit down for this nice meal, and there's wine pairings because each wine complements the food, and that's how the wine mm-hmm. wine sommelier put the meal together yeah. with the chef and everything. Yep. I mean, that's not like sit down and get wasted. Nope. On nope. six glasses of wine. Yeah. No. And, and again, it's, you know, it's an individual thing. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And I think, um, you know, like I said, I'm not totally abstinent from alcohol. I'll mm-hmm. have one or two here and there, mm-hmm. um, but I'm very conscious of it. Mm-hmm. And like Lee said earlier, you know, if you have to think about it, you have a problem. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's one of the most powerful things. Right. But I would totally have a glass of wine mm-hmm. or whatever here mm-hmm. and there. Yeah. You know, but I just know I don't want to be where I was before. I don't want to have five drinks in 30 minutes sure. ever again. Sure. Um, Maybe I'll have like, you know, five drinks a week or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. that's more where I'm at. Mm-hmm. But and it's not, um, and it's not from a judgment thing or whatever. I don't think alcohol is bad. Yeah. I just don't think it's the best thing for me all right. the time. Right? right. It's just where and you're I at. And I don't feel as good. And Yeah. It's you where know, you're at. It's new like awareness. This new workout thing. Like, it, you know what I mean? I kick in my ass enough without, for surely I can't go in there and be intoxicated or hung over. Right. I'd probably puke all over the place. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Right? Well, plus you'll have longer repair time in between workouts yeah. when you're with alcohol in your system. Yeah, you know what? It's That's true, fact. too. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. The The other thing, too, is um, did you ever... I remember my mom growing up, and she's passed now, so I can talk shit about her. <laughs> but but the when, when I was growing up, she would clean the house 24-7. My dad would sit in his chair and watch That's TV. That's an escape. Yeah, totally. My dad would sit in his chair and watch TV, and that he was escaping. And then my mom would just stay busy cleaning the house all the time. And, you know, I was like... I kind of thought like, hmm, 
But now when I look back on that, I'm like, they were totally escaping each other. Yeah. Right. Cause they were toxic too. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that was one of those really interesting things, you know, when I would watch that scenario and then my sister would be doing her thing and I'd be riding my bike for as long as I could and not coming home until I absolutely had to. And mm -hmm. it was interesting, like that whole, when you sit back and really look at the dynamic, you're like, wow, like you're saying, you know, you went to high school, then you had two jobs and on the weekends you go out and get, you know, Wasted. cause you don't want to deal with your shit. Yep. And that's, you almost create that habit. You know what I mean? That yeah. escaping habit as you get older yeah. to avoid everything. Yeah. Problem. When you're avoiding everything, again, it's going to come it's up. It's going to come up. Like your shit's going to come up. Right. Sideways or otherwise. Yeah. Or whatever ways. It's coming. Sure. At some point. Right. Right. You're just right. avoiding the issue. Yeah. The the other thing, too, is um, I'm blabbing again. Jesus. Just tell me to shut up. But I know you won't. The the um, the relationship thing. Yeah. You're, you're escaping pain, too. Talk about that. This is your This is your jam. Escaping pain. What do you mean? So, like, you know, you break up. Mm -hmm. And instead of dealing with your shit, you mm. go get another relationship. Mm. Yeah. Talk about it. Well, um, you know, there's there's two different ways people deal with it. And some people deal with it as like, uh, you know, the I'm going to lock myself in, the, in, in my house for two days or a week. And I'm going to lay around and watch a bunch of movies and cry or not cry or just eat a bunch of ice cream or do whatever it is that I need to do where I feel like I'm grieving. Mm -hmm. So they fast paced grief, right? And then there's people who know that or just follow what their body tells them as they go through the process and understand, oh, this is really sad. And they might talk to a friend or they might talk to a therapist or whoever it is mm -hmm. and just discuss what the emotions are, talk about the feelings, talk about how it's impacting them as a change. You know, I miss doing this, I miss doing that. You know, all that true grief. So the marathon mm -hmm. grief. So it's the sprint sprint grieving and breakup and marathon grieving and breakup. Right. And when you do the marathon process, by the time you get to, you know, miles and miles into it for the, you know, if we're looking at the analogy of a marathon, um, you know, you're 25 miles in or whatever, at that point, then you can start to say, oh, wait, I'm actually okay by myself. Right. But you have to run the marathon to feel that. Mm -hmm. And if you stay in your house and shut the door and pull the blinds for a week and eat ice cream and Sometimes drink beer, okay. no, it's okay. But if the marathon doesn't follow that, then you're never going to get to that place mm -hmm. where you understand what that's like and, you know, to, to um, you know, really, I guess, nurture yourself. Right. Because getting back to that place of self-nurturing after uncoupling is what a lot of people miss. And uncoupling is um, losing your identity. So people miss that point, too, where it's like, OK, I've been in this relationship. I've been either a wife or a husband or I've been a partner in some way, a significant other, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then when you unbecome that, you unbecome who you were mm -hmm. as that. Mm -hmm. And it's a loss of friends sometimes it's a loss of identity it's a loss of understanding of who you financial. are financial yeah. a lot of it yeah so then you move forward and if you try to fast pace it fast track it and um, skip the the actual grieving process and give yourself time and give yourself time for the self-awareness and understanding and growth and always recommend counseling therapy coaching always. whatever always always yeah and it's not because you need help, but it's it's you need to process. You need to process. Mm -hmm. And a third party is where the processing is yep. helpful. Yeah. Yep. And and it makes you way more aware and way more conscious of really who you are because that third party, that professional, mm -hmm. not like they know what to say, but their job is to make you aware of your reality. And they're where not a lot of times your friends exactly. And a lot of times you know, your friends are great to talk to too. I talk to my well, friends all the time subjective. and you but but all yeah, exactly. That's mm -hmm. the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're you you won't get the true eval. I guess. Right. Um, and, and that's why I think it's so important. Now, you know, you break up with somebody after you go out for a couple of months, but if it's like years long yeah. and you don't go to counseling, mm -hmm. some, maybe some people are okay with that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be, mm -hmm. I'd need to like go process it and unpack yeah. some stuff, you know, or even if it's, you know, a year, six months, a year. Um, mm -hmm. I have a client who I'm working with right now and, and was just in like a, sh was in a marriage and then that ended. And then, you know, the first relationship lasted months or whatever. And it's affecting her because it's triggering rejection. So probably from her marriage, though. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's probably both, right? She absolutely. Didn't heal from the first one, so now yeah. you have all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we've been working through all of it, but mm -hmm. but to have the conversation after the the short term thing mm -hmm. is a much easier conversation, and um, it, it's just easier to process. I think um, you know she, she might not agree. I'm sure she agrees because we did talk about that. Mm -hmm. But but her awareness and saying, "Wow, I can't believe I can actually have this conversation right now," is remarkable. Yeah. Because she did the marathon after the marriage, mm -hmm. after that breakup. That's a good deal. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you're doing. Yeah, essentially. I mean, you know, even on the show, we talk about being transparent, right? Mm -hmm. And you told me on this show, you're like, you're keeping yourself so busy with all these adventures. You're like avoiding the issue. I'm like, no, I'm not. I just like to be busy. Yeah. I said that on the show. I was mm -hmm. full of shit. Mm -hmm. I couldn't admit it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, no, I'm actually like, it, it, it was messing me up. It wasn't that you couldn't. You didn't, you really didn't know. No, I didn't know. But I really, I mean, now that I'm looking back, if I could talk to like myself, yeah. I'd be like, hey, dude, like you need to have a little mm -hmm. roll, you know? Sure. But I was dating and partying and having fun. And I'm like, this isn't real. Right. But look what it, look what you did then, what you've gone through since then right. that Correct. brought you that awareness. Yep. You went on your trip. Yeah. You came back, you got quiet. You came back, right? You still kept doing therapy. Yeah, you, you know, you kept and moving the, and, along. And that's the thing. You know, I think therapy, right? We talk about that. I think I would always do that mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm not escaping. To have that third, not every week, not maybe once a month, maybe every couple months. Maybe I've been going forty years. Yeah, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, especially somebody I trust. You know, right. like I have, you know, the team that helps us with the show and things like that. But, but the, you know, people that I trust to talk to and give me that, like truthful feedback is a right. big thing to make sure that I'm not escaping something, to make sure that I'm conscious and aware, mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, does this really make sense? You know, even from a business perspective sometimes mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, you don't have ego involved or that it's not about rejection or that it's not about this or that or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I always relate business to relationships too because it's a relationship. Yeah. And sometimes those relationships don't work and that's okay to walk away from those too. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Like that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like why would you Absolutely. want drama? You know, when you're running a business or at work, it's the same thing as having drama at home. It can mm -hmm. still be just as toxic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another realization that I, that I came to as well, you know. And a lot of times if you have a toxic relationship at home, it bleeds over into work or of vice course. versa. Of course. Right? So fix your shit, really, and yeah. make sure that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, if you want to have that joy, then create it. Right. It's a choice. Yeah, you cannot have joy if you choose to escape. Yeah, it's you not possible. No. It's just not. It is not. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know, the other thing too is I think I think I we talked about fear earlier. I just realized that, that one of the things I'm afraid of is not having the joy. Mm. You know, you ever have like a day, and Robin Robin can relate to this too, I'm sure, but you ever have a day like where you wake up and you're like, Man, this is cool. I'm super happy. And you're like, fuck, I hope I don't remember my past. You know what I mean? Like you, you know oh, what wow. I'm saying? Like, wow. have you ever done that? Like, have no. you ever been like, man, I hope I don't feel like that again. Or I hope I don't miss. No. I, I do that nope. sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Like, I'll be like, man, I'm having such a good time. And then I'll be like, shit, I hope I don't remember. You know, I hope I don't feel like that so, again. You so, know? so you, you can do, and I know you don't want to want me to do this, but all you have to do is flip that to gratitude. Mm -hmm. No, totally. You're absolutely right. It's all yeah. you have to do. And be present. Like, I'm so grateful that that is in the past. Yeah. And just like state it out loud. Mm -hmm. And then go to back to where you want to be with your this is gonna yeah. be a great day. And I'm not trying to do toxic positivity, but it, this is about manifesting. Sure. It is. So sure. you can't manifest just, joy if you're afraid of not having it because right. all the universe is gonna hear is you're afraid of joy. Sure. And you know what's funny too is like the fire department and things like that. It, it would always be like you'd be having a great time, and then something really horrible would happen and yeah. ruin it. And that that you know, all those years yeah, of doing so that stuff made it talking. that way, right? Yeah. Or a toxic relationship. Like, you're like, oh, we're having a good time. And then, boom, you're in a fight. And you're like, what the fuck you know, just happened? Like, gaslighting, why are you like, blown up, right? Yep. Um, but that's that's a powerful thing, mm -hmm. you know? And one of the things, um, we talk about Joe Dispenza every now and then, you know, and Abraham Hicks and yeah. all that. And they talk about getting present. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they always say is they're like, hey, you know, realize where you're at. Like, we're in a studio. Right. And Robin's here and Shelly's here. And, you know, the... We call what do you call this again? The oh, Mike, Mike condom. Mike condoms. <laughs> it's black and it's foamy. And like that's how you get present and back. You take your that you know yeah. the static out of your head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that ability to be present is, you know, key. not escaping. It's not escaping. And being just present, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's okay too, mm -hmm. and it helps immensely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but um but yeah the escape yeah. you know it starts our, with mindfulness yeah we had um we had Destry Abbott on yes. a while ago what a great the guy's fantastic what a great yeah. interview and, and yeah. such a really incredible athlete and and, a, and as a person too yes, he's a absolutely. great father he's a great husband but you know after he did that show I saw I caught him on Facebook you know and he he actually went on a ride after that and he's like I I'm escaping Wow. Because he like dumped so much emotion so much. and yeah. so much. That's understandable though. Because totally. That's escape processing, mm -hmm. which is different. Yeah. And he, he took a picture of him riding his dirt bike, you know, down by himself down this like gnarly, because sure. he's, a, you know, he's amazing. And he, he like sits on top of this mountain. He like kind of took a picture where he's sitting. He's like, no, I, I saw just that. need to disconnect. Yeah. You saw that too. Yeah. It's a mental health thing. It's yeah. totally a mental yeah. health thing, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I do that sometimes. I go sit by the river, take some music out and just sit by the river and mm -hmm. watch for wild horses and watch the water yeah. go by. Yeah. And that's an escape, but it's a disconnect. It's an intentional disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes me be really present with my thoughts. Yeah. Or you go walk through the park. Yeah. Some of the dumbest stuff, right? Like you think, oh, walking in the park. Like if you get your ass up off the couch, you take your shoes off and you go walk in the grass in the park. That's freaking healing. I don't know why, but or, it's cool. Or you know on, what I mean? Sit Grounding. On, sit on your back patio and just leave everything silent and listen to the birds. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? I get woken up by a marking bird every Love morning it. singing outside my window. I'm like, you know, five o'clock in the morning. Dude, I still have to sleep till six, but he's I, singing and I'm like, oh my God, that is just the coolest thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool deal. Like, again, yeah. being grateful, right? Yes. The, the, um, that's another escape, too. Did you ever, did you ever um, drive down the road? We're driving again, right? Oh we got to use my driving examples. Ruh -ruh. And, and you, you know, you play the music to distract you from actually thinking about what's going on. Have you ever done that? No. No? I have. I must be crazy. But like sometimes when I'm driving on the road and it's all dead silent and I'm not talking on the phone, the radio's not on, I'm like, I don't know if I really want to do this right now. So I'll yeah. turn on the radio, you know what I mean? Or call yeah. somebody or whatever. Yeah. That's an escape too. Yeah. You know, and that's like when I'm super self-aware, which I try to be. Sure. I'm like, oh, what am I doing that for? Like, yeah. what's my deal? Why can't I just be quiet and cruise in my car? Yeah. You know, so. I definitely it, used to be there. Yeah. The, you know, I always question, yeah. right? I'm always questioning. Yeah. Because it's this is so fascinating. So now when learn. I put music on, I'm like, oh, I really want to listen to this. Or sometimes yeah. I just drive in silence. And, or And, you know, the funny thing, too, is the sobriety piece. This is a lot of this is new. Uh -huh. Like, I haven't been totally, totally sober uh -huh. in years. Uh -huh. So it, this is like a new adventure almost in a way. Because because regardless of how much you drink at night or a day or whatever, it does affect you the next day, whether mm -hmm. you whether you want to admit it or not, it affects you. Mm -hmm. You know. And now that I don't have that, I'm like, shit. You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm way more aware. I have way more ideas too. I'm happy for you. And clearly, I talk more. No, you talk the same. Do I? Same it's amount. The same. Same amount. All right. Well, there you have it. So so um, you know when you're dealing with. You know, you have a, a practice. I mean, you, you talk to tons of people all the time and you coach them and all that. What, what are some of their, like, when, when, does, when do you talk to somebody and you realize, oh, my God, they're trying, like, escaping or something unhealthy? Like, what make, what's the trigger for that? Like, what are the words you hear sometimes? Uh, it's usually relationship stuff. That they're escaping the relationship? Or, it's usually, or, yeah. And they're doing. Yeah, it's usually relationship escape. Um, hmm. Usually... I mean, for, for females, it tends to be social media, is what I see. Mm -hmm. um, or hanging out with their friends all the time. Yeah, or... and, and men, it seems to be activities. Yeah. Like golfing all the time keeping with their busy. pals or something? Yeah, keeping busy. Going to see, watch football games. Yeah, just know. like running around doing things. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a difference between that, and I, I think it's a situational thing. Mm -hmm. Like you have to evaluate the big picture, because mm -hmm. now I'm running around doing things because it's fun. Right. Before well, I was and I'm not saying everybody who, who, every woman who's on social media is escaping her life, or right. every man who's going to the gym and playing golf is escaping his life, because that is That's absolutely not, true. not true. Right. But some people who don't communicate with a partner. If we're talking relationships, if if your communication is broken down, if your sex life has deteriorated, if um, the tone of your relationship has changed and there's like maybe a sense of anger or just like um, disdain and, you know, there's like an undertone of what wasn't there before mm -hmm. and just the sense of well-being of the relationship is deteriorated and different and add to that, oh, he's doing something all the time over here and I'm on social media and in my group text with my friends for my the emotional feeding, then that whole picture presents itself as, you know, right. 
not good. And, and the purpose is, right, just the awareness of that. Yes. You actually know where you're at, the self-aware. Yes. And that's where counseling comes in. Or yes. even a coach, like yes. a life coach, relationship coach, mm -hmm. whatever. Because they just make you aware of your reality. Sure. You know, and ask the question. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, and what's funny is, is, you know, when people say, how do I know when it's over? Well, like Lee said, when you ask the question, it's usually a, something to, it's a pretty good indicator. to dig into. Yeah. Yeah, for First sure. First of all, why would you ask the question? Because people don't ask that question unless they think there's something beneath it. Or unless they think it's over. They right. just can't admit it. Exactly. They, you know, a lot of times people ask questions like that because they want affirmation. It's like they're looking for permission. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And Or how do I know when it's over? And then you give them the answer. And they're like, oh, yeah, does that all the time. She does that all the time. Sure. Or he does that all the time. Which you know? I would never building, do. you're doing the... That's, what, that's why I ask questions like, yeah. well, has your sex life changed? Has your communication changed? Has this changed? So I kind of go through that list, and yeah. it's an easy list of a few questions. Yeah, and communication is at the top. Right. Right? Honesty, communication, mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. Those are at the top, right? Mm -hmm. You know what? It's, it's funny because when we talk about trust, like, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. Yes. Yeah, that's massive. It is. You know? And, and that goes back to that fantasy. We talk about, you know, anybody in a relationship that lives in a fantasy world there isn't trust that's why they live in a fantasy world right you know what i mean there's not truth either yeah hence there's no trust hence there's a fantasy True. so you're like it's a totally make-believe little thing you got going on yeah. right and you can kind of create anything you want yeah you know what i'm saying not yeah. kind of you can yeah you can we've all done it well yeah. not all of us but most of us have mm -hmm. or at mm -hmm. some point in our life mm -hmm. and then you know that goes back to that toxic deal and that's a form of escape too is creating you know, a belief about somebody that's not even actually true. Like you put them up on a pedestal and you make them this person that they're not even, they're not. Yeah. As soon as, you know? as, soon as you put somebody on a pedestal, it's, it's just a recipe for no good. Yeah. It's a shit show. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, in anything. No one can live up to it. Well, in anything too, sure. right? Like at work or, absolutely. oh my God, I have this amazing boss and he's such a great mentor. And yeah, oh my gosh, I just want to be like him. And you're like, oh yeah, my God, Why are you go. projecting that all onto someone? Why right. do you need to, to even think that? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of being like, hey, I'm going to be the best I can be and yeah. I have a great environment to help me with succeed. Sure. It's a totally different mindset, a totally yeah. different, but or when that's you're, a form Or of when you're with too. someone, instead of, oh, he's amazing or she's amazing. Uh, I would say a healthier perspective on that is, yeah, it feels really good to be with them. Right. That's that's what you're looking for right. is the feeling, not projecting this, you know, glowing, the the, the halo thing. Yeah, on. and that can be in a form a form of escape too. When you're putting somebody up on a pedestal, mm -hmm. you're actually taking some of the pressure off yourself. It's not pressure. You're all the pressure and giving True. it to them. See. Yeah. That's why you're a relationship coach. Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give your power away. No, I agree. I totally agree. Mm -mm. It's that's a self-esteem thing too. You know, it's the the funny thing is, is all these things relate. It's almost like this big circle of elements. Yes. And they all sort of intertwine. It's like a giant web. Sure. Right. And you know, you have, if one of them's really strong and prominent, then it affects everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, it's like a network kind of. It's it's like the recipe for Ava's cookies. Yeah. If you take one ingredient out, the cookies are going to suck. Wow, that was really good. Yeah. Ava's cookies. <laughs> Ava's cookie theory. Oh my god. Maybe gosh. you should write about that. Maybe I should. And we can relate that instead of like the flying monkeys thing. We can have Ava's cookie there theory. There we go. Maybe you should write, yeah. Let's, Fire it up. I'll look for it tomorrow. Let's work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So, I mean, I think that's a good overview of, yeah, of um, I think. you know, escaping and things like that. Well, and because people think, I think most people just see escape as like a linear thing, but it's such a huge picture. It's sure. not linear. And the only person that can really evaluate if it's healthy or unhealthy is, is you again, right? Right. You know, it should be self-aware. Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody asked the question. Well, and usually what happens is, this This is actually, this is the secret, is if you are choosing to escape, if you're doing things that is that represent escaping, and you have a partner who notices it, and you've already said to yourself, oh, no, I'm fine, this is good, but it's actually not, and your partner mentions it, and you're defensive, it's a problem. Oh, for sure. So that's what I people think, miss. I think if your partner mentions anything and you're defensive, that's a problem. Absolutely. I totally do. Like, there's no reason to be defensive ever with your partner. Well, unless you're just a defensive person in general to everyone, because I know a few people like that. Well, yeah, that wouldn't be you my know, partner, Some people but... live in that, that lack mode, in that mm -hmm. low self-confidence, low self-esteem, poor me mode. That's that's very well, much then that's a different, not healthy anyway. Yeah, it's right? a defensive yeah. personality. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you're right. When when your partner mentions something not in an attacking way, um, and you're defensive, then 
that's something that right. really or you won't even consider their feelings or yeah. what they need or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good. That's not a good thing. Not mm -mm. a good place. Mm -mm. All right. Okay. I think we did good on that one. I liked it. Actually, you did good on that one. Good yeah. job, Shelly. You did too. Good job. Isn't she still shiny? Yeah. She She's still great. shiny. She looks great. Yeah, your flower dress. Sweaty. Maybe you should not wear black anymore. Maybe you should I'm just wear like flowers and roses and stuff. Black. I might wear polka dots next time. Ooh, polka knows? dots. What do you think? Like polka dots. Oh, you guys are both wearing flowery dresses. I didn't even know yeah. that. It took him how, how many nice. hours to figure that out? <laughs> Maybe I'll wear a flowery shirt next time, like a Tommy Bahama there or something. There you go. I don't know. Rock that right. little Hawaiian Rock that thing. shit. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about ro wardrobe and another thing, like a self care video or something, right? Perfect. Right. Everybody, thanks for watching. Scott Framler, Shelly Netco, and Rock and Robin on the knot, on the mental knot. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.